Dal, explain to me why this isn't a dereliction of duty for any police officer. When you see one of your colleagues, mm. a person that works for you, this is one of the bosses sitting in the car, and you see him under attack, a life-threatening attack, as it turned out, and you don't do anything, you just stay in the car. That does not seem to me to be anything but a dereliction of his duty as a policeman. Well, I, I suppose what we need to remember, Piers, is the whole incident took 80 seconds. Um, Caliber Massoud had killed four people on the bridge. He'd rushed in, mm -hmm. he had two knives, he attacked PC Keith Palmer, who was a, a decorated officer, an incredibly brave officer, who, had, who was a thief taker. He had a stab proof vest on, he had a personal protection, he had gas spray, he had an asp. He was, he was attacked, stabbed. I don't understand a senior policeman who's watching one of his own getting killed. And I think there's a lot of anger in the lower ranks of the police about this because I think most policemen I know actually would have jumped out of the car and tried to help their colleague, mm. even at grave risk to themselves. Yeah. I mean, he had two civilians with him. I think it's really important to remember that. Well, they could have stayed in the car. Well, if you open the car door... I mean, none of us were there. You, know, right. you, you open the car door... The way Khalid Massoud was acting, he was going to uh, he was going to attack uh, Sir Craig Mackey. He was going to potentially attack the two civilians. I mean, I, I mean I, when I when I look at this, I mean, I recall an incident when I was a young PC, when I went to a call where a man had a, a weapon in a cafe, and I was uh, with a, an old sweat. He basically sent me in there. Mm. Uh, and what I had with me was a baton. I went in. The guy um, put, put, pointed the gun at me, shot it, and the bullet got stuck in the in the barrel. Now I look back and I think. Now, was that, was that a brave thing to do or was that a stupid thing to do? And I, and I think what you, what you need to be doing is looking at what other responsibilities Craig Mackey mm, had. And except I think... what people are looking at, Peter Blexley, is that here was a, an unarmed police officer at the gates, PC Keith Palmer, under attack. You have a very senior police officer in the car and it is the police's duty to put themselves... I mean, you know, that's what you sign up for, isn't it, as a police officer, to protect other people, to put yourself in harm's way in oh. order to protect... And whatever operational reason he might have for locking those doors, it's going to stick with him, isn't it, that he stayed in the car and rather so than should. getting out? And so it should. His actions that day were utterly unforgivable. You know, a police officer's natural instinct, when you see a colleague being stabbed, is to get out and help him, first and foremost, always, unmistakably. Mm. That is what you do. Policing is a family. It's a, it's a collective. It's that thin blue line. And if Craig Mackey couldn't, didn't want to get out of his car and protect a fellow officer, draw the enemy fire, make yourself a, a sacrificial lamb if need be, be heroic, be like Charlie Ginnigal at the London Bridge attack, an off-duty PC who's having a drink with mates and sees a terror attack unfolding, and without blinking an eye, he goes, I'm going to get involved. Well, it, it, that's heroism, that's getting involved, when, that's being a police officer. When Sir Craig uh, paid tribute to that exact police officer who was honoured at the Pride of Britain Awards, um, he said... Uh, helping, supporting, running to the aid of the public or an injured colleague, putting others before ourselves, mm. showing courage and compassion. These we humbly call our values. Yeah. Our values? He had the t temerity to call them our values. He should have called them other officers' values because he didn't exhibit any of that on the day of Khalid Massoud's treacherous terrorist attack. I mean, I, you know, I'm afraid I share this view. Uh, but I'm not a policeman, and I think if I was a police officer in this country right now, I, I'm picking up, just from what I'm reading and hearing, a lot of resentment. This man is a very senior policeman in this country. But the reality of the situation is, Craig had opened that door, what would have happened? You know, would he, he, would have, he had a shirt sleeve on, would he have been stabbed as well, most likely? Well, he might have been. Yeah. But isn't would that a risk you have to take in that No, position? absolutely. So one of his own police officers was getting stabbed to death and that the only person in that event who could have potentially helped and stopped it happening and saved his life was him. No, that's not true. There were, 
There were two armed officers, mm -hmm. uh, and an inquest has asked the question. I remember you interviewing me on the day mm -hmm. this happened, and you made the point about armed officers. And I, actually, I disagreed with you because I didn't think everybody needed to be armed. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't know, and that's actually come out of the inquest, is that the two armed officers that should have been at carriage gates mm -hmm. weren't there. Right. They were for, they're about 100 metres away. Yeah. Now, now, if those officers had been there... But they weren't there. That, well, precisely. They were there eventually. Well, yeah. close But the fact they weren't there, there is a different yeah. issue, isn't it, to, to the fact that mm -hmm. the person who was there it's not, no, could no, have Craig, helped and Craig, didn't help. No, Craig was armed. You had two armed officers, the close protection officers, who were two separate officers, mm -hmm. who just happened to be there... Yeah. Uh, they, they actually took out the, the terrorists. Let's, let's stick with what we know. Yeah. The two indisputable facts... Craig Mackey saw Keith Palmer getting attacked and Craig Mackey locked the doors. OK? They are indisputable facts. And he chose to stay in that vehicle instead of bravely getting out, drawing enemy attack, potentially, yeah. and doing what he could do for a colleague. Do you think he should resign? I th uh, most definitely, and I think the Independent Office of Police Conduct should be investigating him, because I know of a case where a police officer stood by and did nothing when a colleague got attacked, and that officer was disciplined and booted out of the force. Oh. Mm. I'm, I'm not sure this is even about whether Sir Craig Mackey could actually have intervened. I think what a lot of people are shocked about is that his instinct... He didn't follow up on his instinct just simply to get out, that that protective, I have to put myself in harm's way in order mm. to do something, yeah. wasn't the, the, you know, his primary yeah, no, driver. Uh, you know, and, and, and when, I was, when, I, when I speak to people, most people say that. What would you have done? What would I have if done? If you'd been uh, him, yeah. you're a senior police officer in this country now. Public service If you had your been blood. in that exact position, what would you have done? Uh, the honest answer is I don't know. But what do you think you'd have done? Well, I, I'd like to think um, that I would intervene, mm. but I don't... I didn't have... I don't... Not. Would I, you I was... think it would have been the right thing to do? Never putting aside instinct, would your feeling as a senior policeman have been when you saw a colleague getting attacked to get out the car and try and help him? Yeah, that's the, that's the instinctive thing to do. Would it have been the right thing to do with two civilians there? You had two armed officers who were the plot officers who actually took out the individual, mm. the close protection. You had two other armed officers who should have been at the carriage gate entrance who weren't there. Mm. So I, th I think those people... So when you say Craig Mackey was the only... He, he was not the only individual there. There was a... There's, I used to... I, I used but he, to was the, he was the assistant commissioner... Was he the acting Metropolitan commissioner Police. at the time, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And his instinct, yeah. he said he his instinct was to get out and help, mm. but actually what he did was turn and lock the door. But what we, are we, are we going to be talking service. about something very mm. different here? So let's say Craig Mackey had got out, and then let's say Khalid Massoud attacked him, mm. which is probably likely, and then he attacked the two uh, civilians, who are not police officers, who are not trained. We'd be having a different conversation. We'd be saying, well, why did Craig okay. Mackey do that? Well, why couldn't he have jumped out and told the civilians to lock the car? Exactly. I'd have told him to clear off. I'd have got out of that car and I'd have gone win, lose or draw. I'd have locked the car or run off. The, uh, it, it, it contrasts very starkly with the behaviour of Tobias Elwood, the MP who tried to save mm. PC Keith Palmer's life, who has said that actually, quite apart from the run, hide, tell advice that the government gives people in these situations... Members of the public. ..you should go and help. And this is what he told us on Good Morning Britain. Who are the first responders? It's not actually the police. We call them that. Mm. The first responders are just the general public that are absolutely there. I know it's a tough judgment to make, but we do need to stand up, I believe, and, 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 and challenge this. We need to stand up and we need to... You know, his advice is you go and help. His instinct was he didn't know what was happening. He didn't know if there was a shooter. He didn't know if there was another attacker. His instinct was to go in and help. Run, hide and tell is sound advice for members of the public. And I think, and I would urge them to do that. Mm. But we are not talking about a member of the public here. We are talking about a senior police officer who saw his colleague being attacked mm. and decided to sit tight in his car. Utterly, mm. all round, upside down, unforgivable. I mean, we, we, at that point, we didn't know whether this was a one-off attack, whether it was a series of attacks, uh, and, and he was the... As but neither said, did acting, Tobias Elwood. No, he didn't. No, yeah. and I, you know, and and neither I, did the, the guy on London Bridge, off-duty policeman. I mean, right. the, the truth is... None of us know how he'd react in that situation.